We could not do this. She couldn't do it. So we about to do this. Yes. For you, sir. Just for you. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. we're gonna get started. Right. But we're gonna set the mood because I like to set the mood. You mean set the vibe? Whatever. Right. Because we said mood. <laughs> <laughs> The moody vibes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. All right. Y'all ready for this? Here we go. Blast from the past. The blast from the past. From a 90s baby. I'm always feeling good Come and catch my vibes Strolling through my hood At any given time But it's the best day ever It's a beautiful day, it's a wonderful day But it's the best day ever there's nothing left for me to say But it's the best day ever It's the beautiful day, it's the wonderful day But it's the best day ever There's nothing left for <laughs> me to say Hey, I feel like Spongebob cause it's the best day ever Smiling up at God cause I know the man is clever He woke me up and said go get your money This is my blessing, no one could take it from me Using my talent to make me some cash this feeling is great, I hope that it never pass Living every day like it is my last Why I'm so happy, I can't wait to ask I'm always feeling good Come and catch my vibes Strolling through my hood At any given time It's the best day ever There's nothing left for me to say But it's the best day ever It's the beautiful day, it's the wonderful day But it's the best day ever There's nothing left for me to say Gotta thank God that I woke up Now I can go collect my funds And I saw a cute shawty on the way Tonight we going on our first day Oh me, oh my, who this beautiful girl Hey little mama, come and live in my world Started talking, got so much in common Asked her for her number, so I gave her a call and I'm always feeling good Come and catch my vibes Strolling through my hood At any given time It's the best day ever. It's a beautiful day. It's a wonderful day. But it's the best day ever. There's nothing left for me to say. But it's the best day ever. It's the beautiful day. It's the wonderful day. But it's the best day ever. There's nothing left for me to say. I'm always feeling good. Come and catch my vibe. Y'all, so yes. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. In it's some the places wonderful. they text. That is the squad right there, okay? <laughs> yes. Full EP vibe. We need that vibe right now. I don't know about it's y'all. It's a beautiful day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the doctors should subscribe to this. Yes. Oh, Lord. Absolutely. Well, because the doctor should have subscribed. You're like prescribed. It's like, have you had any good? Vibes? I like that. That's funny. You know what that is? I'm not. Oh. Even that's that's legit. The doctor should Y'all not. Prescribe. Shoot. I'm not gonna talk about how I just almost snatched my phone. We have the barbecue program. It's going yeah. up. <laughs> the boy. Oh Lord. Yes. Well, in case y'all didn't know, 
We about to get started. Let's do it. It is that time. If you don't know, now you know. Now you know. Because what you don't know, you're going to find out. Ooh. Ooh. Yo, I'm like, I'm still mad you still use that picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one? That's, that's a cute picture. I think you look beautiful. Look, I told you what picture I wanted, and you still use the other picture that I didn't like. It don't, it don't fit well with everybody else. Oh, my God. Man. <laughs> <laughs> now, y'all know me, she, uh-uh. See? <laughs> <laughs> you got to do rock, paper, scissors with yourself before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm done. <laughs> See, look, while y'all over here making me feel like I just did wrong. I was trying to pick the best pictures that I knew would work for everybody in this thing. Anyway. You're great, yes. Uh, I'm not religious no more, I'm off the cuff. Off to learn new things, I'm on a bus. Uh, walk into my dreams in a tux. Uh, Everywhere I go is kingdom come, uh Dead gum, dead gum My inheritance so long that it goes conundrums Wanna understand what I stand on Yo, it's a brain blast, Jimmy Neutron, yeah Don't need a mic to drop it Don't need this space to rock it Don't gotta click the copy I got it, I got it They call me a pastor prophet A prophet, a prophet, uh I can't knock it, I can't stop it Stop it AJ, I get to take your place today. Whoa. <laughs> I got I'm you. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me get my <clears throat> opening. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I've been a climbing on and reaching lands and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't turn your back. Don't you sat down on the steps cause you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now for I still going, honey. I still climbing and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Oh, yes. By Lexington Hughes. By Lexington Hughes. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not going to play with y'all today. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I had to come with it. No. <laughs> yes. So, how are y'all doing this evening? Welcome, welcome, and welcome to the movements. This <clears throat> evening is about to be lit, yes. litter than lit. Why? Because we're talking about Black men. Yes. The tainted ooh, truth. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got your girl, Coach Me. Yeah, yeah, I called myself out first. We got Seth oh. Music right here. Yo, what's good? We got Camille, aka Slay with Millie. <laughs> <laughs> we got AJ the Sheriff. Gang, gang. And, <clears throat> Mariah, aka Mimi. Mimi. Look at her. She's a hey. <laughs> and we also have a special guest for you this evening. Come on, show, you, show your face. Show your face. Show oh, your we face. We got someone else in here. Show your face. Oh, snap. Oh, my God. Oh. oh my god, is that Kayla? It's yeah. Kayla, y'all. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, let's go. From Let's go. <laughs> Yo, that's what's up. Yo, man, congratulations on being the very first guest to the podcast. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are super excited to be here with you all tonight. And um Seth Music. Yes. I'm gonna hand it over to you. Yes. We had to kind of level the playing field. <clears throat> anyway, so, <laughs> so we wanted to. Uh, so you got to live with her. Here, here are the takeaways for from tonight's podcast. One, don't judge a book by its cover. I know you've heard it before, but look, we gotta we gotta talk about it again. Next one is there's no need to compete with with uh with each other, and you'll find out what we're talking about with that. And then lastly, know your worth. Absolutely. You gotta know your work. Now, AJ, please, What's brother, up? give us the stats. 
Uh, well, after I had to do a scavenger hunt, <laughs> apparently, oh. <laughs> <laughs> for us. Uh, so I did find a couple I was kind of proud of. I said, okay, I can work with that. So the first one I wanted to take a shot at towards the women for us. I was like, black men are more likely to be married than black women. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. Whoa. Like, oh. Whoa. Are you coming out of the game? Are you ready? Are you you? you? Let me say I, that again. I should be put on Let's mute. We mute you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to say that one more time just in case the people in the back can't hear me. I said black men are more likely to be married than black women. Mm, mm, mm. That's interesting. That, that is. Black, it is very black, interesting. Hey, I was but then keep going, man. Give us some more. I got That's, you right here. I got you right here. And my other stat that goes with that. <clears throat> And this is for the uh, stereotype that the black men are uh, absent a lot for the fatherless children. Well, according to stats today, the black men are more likely to be in their children's life than our counterparts are. As in all of them put together, as of today, black men are more, even if they're not married, are more involved in their children's life than their counterparts put together. What? Yeah, and, and and to get it, and if they, if the kids, and for the counterparts that live with their kids and the black men that live with their kids, we are more likely to read books, show them how to do their work, change diapers, feed them more than the counterparts. And this was a stat as of 2019. I'm like, let's go, we're in there. Well, then. We're in there. And then for uh, for a single uh, for our other fellas that talk about when it comes to getting money. One out of five black men, you can pick five black men, and one out of them is going to be automatic. Their chances are being, their chances went up from 41% to 78% to be in the upper third chance of the financial people. So one out of five black men, their chances went from 41% to 78% of being in the upper echelon when it comes to being in the financial bracket. Okay. Okay. Look, I'm digging them stats. Oh, like, right. right. We get so, so the all them things where they saying we don't be getting money. One out of five of us be up here. All the ones that said that we don't be taking care of our kids, we doing better than everybody put together. Ooh, <laughs> and for the women say, yo, rich, we we'll get married more for you. <laughs> I will marry anything. Ooh. Ooh, oh, oh, dang, Mariah! Oh, <laughs> like we firing oh, shots. Oh man, shots fired. Oh, Ooh. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> hey, look, I'm glad you told me that. Yeah, you got one more. Oh yeah, she she she, she wanted to pull that one. <laughs> Where is it? It says 85 percent men will marry a black man, while the women only 50 percent will marry black men. You just took me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tripping right Ooh. now. Okay. That way, AJ's, I'm fine, but AJ's, first of all, AJ's stats just literally sealed up the envelope for they be like, men aren't <laughs> black men are not, you know what I'm going you know what I'm saying. No, see. Literally sealed it up, literally like blew my mind because uh he just obliterated. You always, we always, huh? That he just obliterated any stereotype. Any stereotype. Like, mm -hmm. that was crazy. Blew my, my mind the marriage part, too. I was like, right. Oh. Me too. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. It, 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 it feels and like, they out here marrying black women? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, because it, it, it literally feels like one side of the mountain is when we draw the surveys, but on the other side of the mountain, all the, all the other guys are like, bro, we know about we. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing this. We mean, right? <laughs> oh my like, god, that's insane. AJ came through with those. You did. Respect. <laughs> All right, I only got um, uh, I only got two thousand words left, so let's make this quick. I know. Yeah, I'm yeah. Back. <laughs> back. <laughs> okay. Did you save your words all day for that one? <laughs> I, I had to work today, so I had to say, hey, sir, hey, ma'am, how you doing today? So, you know, I'm low. Oh, my so. God. You are, the, your well is dry, okay? Because that, <laughs> <laughs> your well of words is dry then. Because that was, I really find that to be, it, it doesn't surprise me, but that fact is really interesting to me that we really, that by that substantial amount, though, talk way more than men. Like, 
Y'all be coming up with whole stories. We just come with the summary. That's it. We, we don't need to do the story. Look, here's the summary. Beginning, middle, end. Y'all be like, oh, let me tell you about this one girl I saw yesterday. I'm like, is this about what you right. like, Let me tell you what she said. I'm like, oh, my God. All right. All right. So no, Caleb. that's the sum of it is C spot run. Yeah. Spot. So, so Caleb, <laughs> I'm going to throw you into the fire here a little bit, brother. So we're, we're, we're going to ask the first question, and you're going to answer it first. We're going we're gonna to put you out there. You know, you start it off. Let's just, go, just see where it goes. Let's go. You ready for this, man? Let's do it. Man. Let's, oh, go. Let's do it. So, when it comes down to light skin versus dark skin, do you feel like you're perceived differently by skin color? Without a doubt, hands down. Um, oh man, yeah, without a doubt. I, are, are we talking specific, like just in general, or like within our own community? Like you versus me. <laughs> just like yeah, like in like that's what I'm saying. Like in general, like from from the outside yeah. in or within our own. Community. Both. Oh, Hit us with it. Because there's a big there's a there's a there's, big there's stereotype a, and stigma yeah. for both. You know what I'm saying? So like I think talking in general, um, without a doubt, I think that I think that there's colorism. Um, yeah, without a doubt, I feel like light skins kind of get a, I don't want to say like that, see already, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, right. it's, it's <laughs> like, like uh, <laughs> but I mean, it, it is what it is. Yeah, so I mean, um, I think if we were to kind of use like the, the kind of like face value, if there's a light skin and a dark skin, and you're looking from the outside in, from like somebody not from our community, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that they would imagine that the dark skin did individual would be a lot more amp to you know what I mean like <laughs> <laughs> right no because you know so. yeah and so I feel what you're saying because because it's like I know for me personally because I, I'm, a, I'm a light-skinned brother I like I get I feel like I get this weird ass pass well, I can no just... straight up and it's not because <laughs> I it's not because of my personality and because of you know like it's before I even like open my mouth you know what I'm saying like if I walk inside a grocery store with a black brother, like a darker dude than me, and I walk inside a store, I automatically feel like if anything pops off, I might have a better chance <laughs> to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, but straight yeah. up, no, it feels like yeah. that. <laughs> and so, Dang. and so, uh, that's cool. <laughs> no, but 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 because of that, it, it kind of makes me feel weird sometimes because it's like okay, because yeah. once again, like I said, and because of my personality, right? You know, it's because of the way I look, and so it is like. Damn, like what what if I was the crazy one? Like like what if I was the wild one about to do something crazy? You know, like you never know. But but I feel like that started back in the plantation, man, when they when they would split us up. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like that's kind of where that kind of separation started because back then I probably probably would have been in the house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um like, I don't know if I would have been in a field like that because I had, I had skin that was closer to the white man's skin. You, you know? fair skin. Fair skin. Fair skin. Yes. But unfair. To my, to, my, to my dark brothers you know what i'm saying so i don't know i mean have you ever had a situation like that caleb where like you were like oh man you just mm, because you know because he likes you you ever had anything like that i mean me personally my i have a i have a cousin that i'm pretty close with at oh. the end of the day so we kind of do a lot of things together so just even in that own in, in that realm um so if we're walking into a, like you said walking into a business or something like that yeah i'll get looked at differently than he will or just in any situation, you know, it's just, it's just, it happens, you know, but. Um, uh, okay, so I, I kind of, I have a question out of this. So like, okay, you're talking about like you and your cousin. So this is for like all y'all. Have you ever been like, like Seth, for instance, like you was walking with like a dark skinned dude or like, you know, you're with your cousin or AJ, you with like a light skinned dude and y'all walk into a place. Like, who do you think that females look at first? Snap. Well, you already uh, know. Well, it depends on the situation. Like, yeah, it depends okay, on the okay. Y'all walk, y'all walk into a club together. Like the let's say the three y'all walk into a club together. Who you think the females is gonna pick out first? I'm not even looking for that night. Hold on, hold on. Where are we? Wait. What, yeah. What city are we in? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely depends on the city. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Y'all wouldn't makes, know be able to ask that question. It, it, it does. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, let's just say we in we here. We just gonna say we here. 
Tucson. Because if you was in Phoenix versus Tucson, we all know who would be looking at first. <laughs> <laughs> We just didn't talk about what would actually be where we would be. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. I I, I feel like if we kind of play it safe, they might, they might go for the white, the light skinned brother. He's like, oh, he looks nicer. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I can get so, away with this. And see, like that's what I was. I, I like, knew you was gonna say that because yeah. it's like it's almost like the the dark skinned dude has this like dangerous look to oh, him. Dangerous. And so it's like, dangerous. am I gonna go for him because he looks dangerous, or like mm-hmm. the light skinned one because he look like he looks sensitive. Work. I don't know why that's even like that. I don't like, here's, <laughs> like me, like all my me and my brothers, we all dark skin. So like like my uh my brother that's like right behind me, my uh my stepbrother, me like me and him like same age and stuff. So, like we're dark skins, but we're totally different. Like people see me, okay, if I walk in a the place, they might think I'm like a thug or something like that. But they see him. <laughs> And, and like he don't even give that vibe. Like they will look at me like I'm the problem for him. I'm like, yo, we're like the dark skins, like dark skins itself versus the light skin is like, cause I got friends, like homeboys are real tight that are like super light skin and stuff. It's like it's like it's levels, it's levels to how you perceive. It's all about how you carry yourself at the same time too. You know, right. Walking into a place. It's like if me and my homeboy, cause like me and basically like the same, we always dress the same. So when we walk in, they gonna look at me first. Because the perception is the darker is like they're they're the worse ones than the light skinned ones. But I'm like, yo, this dude worse than me. What, what, I'm the nice one. Like, don't don't let them fool you. Like, like I'm more hey, civilized than this dude. Like they hear it's like when he talked versus me talking, you would think if we were to talk on the phone, he sounds like somebody who just straight up hood thug. Uh, what talk about follow up? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, bro, <laughs> Civilized, talk, you normal. Like, <laughs> okay, so hold on, let, let, let me give like one more scenario into this junk. Okay, so let, let, let's say you walk in somewhere and you see once again one light skinned brother and a dark skinned brother. Um, and both of them are wearing really nice suits with a tie, nice shoes, and all that stuff. I see, know. see, I feel like society looks at the darker dude and be like, oh my God, we're so glad you made it through. We're so glad. Like, what's your story, man? <laughs> but, 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 but with a light skinned man, like, it's kind of like, it, it, I, just, I just don't feel like you can't. It's almost it. It is kind of like, oh, nice suit. You know, yeah. rest of the, the, the buddy was like, man, what's your story, man? Like, what, what, what you been? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, how did you, yeah. like, like kind of like, how would you make it here? You know, <laughs> just a nice yeah. suit. Man. Because, you know, like, when you, I mean, shoot, uh, when you when like, look on the news, like, I don't know what it is, man, but it's normally the the darker dudes who are like always getting handcuffed. Like I, I mean, I've seen some like light skinned dudes get handcuffed, but it just seems like it's just not that often. I don't know. It's weird. It is like what what you see. I don't know. It's crazy. But I feel like yeah. like, like that, that, point, that, sure. uh, that craze when that uh, that one light skinned dude that got arrested and his like his picture popped up and dude blew up. And like he done got like uh he got the, the oh, modeling gig and all that. Like oh the, yeah, the that. light skin, the yes. um yeah, right, like, man. right. We don't have like no dark skin brother that just look bomb when they take it. I'm like, yo, He's like, like, what? He, like I don't know. I think I like honestly, I feel like if it was a dark skin dude, the same thing would not have happened. Straight up. Because, because, I because I, even whenever you said that, I was like, because I think he had tattoos on his face too. And then his yeah, eyes, he, that's what got him. He had pretty eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, blue eyes. Yeah, blue eyes. No, so. do, does anybody know what the population difference is? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there like more darker black guys and light skin? I don't know. I mean, How I many know. more I, I dark skin? <laughs> <laughs> because like for, for some reason in my mind once again like just viewing off what we gather from society i feel like we almost think that darker uh guys yeah no darker guys are like expendable like there's there's more of them you know like man they ain't going you know you know what i'm saying like i don't i don't know if i'm making any sense right now but i i just feel like that's the way it feels like light skins are like more rare not rare, but you no. Know? Rare. Well, no. Wait, what? <laughs> no, not not rare. Like that I, is I'm, not the right word, anyway. No, um, it's not. But I'm trying. To, well, I'm asking you to help me out. <laughs> like, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what word you're looking for. Never mind then. Shoot, can't rely on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I All felt right. like he just described the steak the way he wanted it. it was like... <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> wow. Check it out. Whoa. <laughs> right. Oh my God. I was actually looking at trying to see how many dark skins. Oh, I'm like, I'm curious. I, I wonder. If <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any accurate stats on that. <laughs> it don't have I, don't, I don't know how you can differentiate. It's yeah, not light skin and dark skin on the on the papers. It's just that's <laughs> a whole that's a whole nother that's a whole nother subject itself. It's like categorizing right. people as black and like light skin. What they did back in the day. I don't look, because <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> we indigenous. We are yeah. There's a whole lot of. So, game going in here okay we all out here mixed up <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a talk within our own community as well because like people talk about like reparations from like slave, slavery and everything like that and they're talking about like if you're mixed like what percentage makes you eligible for these types of like reparations so even within our own community <sighs> and stuff like that we have our own like like whoa, are you yeah. black like yeah. is that you know what i mean yeah. so that's Oof. all another thing that's a that's a thing that I believe that it's I mean a lot of people too I feel like okay if you have mixed children if they come out a little darker they're automatically deemed as black right and then if they come out a little lighter then they're automatically accepted on this side of the spectrum it's just I, the kids it just I feel like as and I know, um, Seth, you're you're mixed as well. How did you deal in that realm? Like, right. how did you deal about identifying yourself? Well, th- to be honest, I, I don't I don't remember having like issues identifying myself being black and Mexican. I just kind of played the field whatever whatever was appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I need to be more Mexican, I, I I've been I was more Mexican. If I need to be more black, it was like, yeah, like I just played the field. Like, as long you know, just making sure that. You know, I, I, I was, and, and that sounds weird. Like, if I don't feel like I, yeah, like it sounds bad. I, I, yeah. I, it sounds, it I sounds was, I was bad. like, so, was, but oh. that means that it was a challenge, <laughs> right? Yeah. That oh. means that there was a level of acceptance there. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, if I walk inside a room full of freaking uh, Mexicans, I'm kind of like, all right, I'm going to lower the black a little bit. I ain't going to lose the show. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to be more yeah. right now yeah. because that's where I'm at. And so, yeah. but um, but if I'm kind of in a position where I'm like around a bunch of like white people, then I'm kind of like, okay, I'm gonna balance this out real a little bit. But I will say this, I will say typically I play the more black side of it, primarily because when you look at me, you you probably see more black than Mexican. I mean, if you look at me long enough, you're like, hey man, you ain't fully one of us, is you? <laughs> like, hold on, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> like, what, what, what else we got in there? And so, uh, <laughs> so I feel like I just automatically do that more, um, and also because I don't speak Spanish, so that that's another barrier for me. But <laughs> I'm trying to learn. I, I just told some coworkers of mine to give me a sentence a day so I can learn some Spanish. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, going down if you don't know how to speak Spanish. The, the Hispanic community be looking at you like you belong there. <laughs> yeah, and so I would say like if I were to get more defensive on one of them. Like, and this sounds weird too. I know my mom ain't at all, but um, <laughs> but like, as far as just like just that pressure, you know what I'm saying? That there's like there's like different types of pressure with, with certain types of people, but like I feel like there's more pressure on like me being black because I'm like, okay, so it's, for example, if the wrong person says the n word, you know, I, I will react. But if someone says like a wetback, you know, what I'm saying? I'm kind of like stupid because <laughs> I, I kind of just like whatever. I don't know if that makes sense. That's kind of like. Well, so I'm just going to throw this in and then Mariah, you know, ask yeah. the next question. But I, what I think is we kind of had this conversation with your parents like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And I think a lot of it had to do with like, at least for his Mexican side per se, is like with his, um like with his grandma, like at that time, whenever he came to America, yeah. like a lot of, you know, Mexicans, they had to act like they were not like they had to kind of like get rid of all of that just so that way that they could their culture in. like they, and so yeah, you yeah. ended up adapting to that the african-american culture more because like whenever your dad came in the pic like you know like that was just it opposed to like being able to have that mixed culture which some people get that opportunity and other people who have to you know kind of settle with living in the suburbs and i gotta just make myself scarce as a human scurse. being like you know <laughs> like you just kind of do what you got to do to survive and where you're at yeah like yeah I, I think in in a lot of ways 
like socially is like how, how do I survive socially it's crazy I think if I can comment on that I think that's one of the bigger things that kind of um that diff that like really shows the differences between like dark skins and light skins because that's not that's not a privilege that dark skins have we can't pick and choose who we who we can be that that kind of that kind of comes back to like the whole I don't know if you've seen the movie where they talk about the um when you're working at a call center or something, you got to put on your white voice. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'll be doing so that. So like, yeah, you know what I mean? So that, that's normal between us, but like in an everyday situation, I can't pick and choose how I how I identify, Um, which I think that's a little more deep rooted because I think when we see light skins, they have the option to identify and they do it, they do it without knowing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they pick and choose who they want to be that day. I wake up. I, I woke up like this. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, <laughs> it is what it is. Right. So, I just think that's something that we have different. Whatever. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I see that. So, I was just trying to see like as a black man, do you guys feel more fantasized more like than other men? Like than other men? Like sexually fantasized? Yeah, like sexually fantasized. Do you feel like like? <laughs> You're sexually fantasizing. <laughs> Carol said, I'll drink to that. <laughs> but, oh, snap. He's like, and um. <laughs> I just got real in here. Dang, girl, where'd you find this? All right. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, I feel like, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, but I'm going to let one of y'all start with that. <laughs> AJ? Uh, <laughs> y'all are funny. I'm like, uh, but pass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got past it. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Pick it up. Pick it up. Look, I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be I'm like, look, every I'm gonna say this. I'm not gonna just downplay all the other races, but every man, there's something about every man that some women fantasize about that certain man, or yeah. that the society portrays that only this man, these type of men, or this race of men does this type of thing well, or whatever. But I can say this, not every race is fantasized all about women. Like only certain women be like, oh, I don't like white men like this, but the other than that, I'll stick with this. But black men, every race of women, there's something about a black man. They, they're like, like not everybody can be like, we're what I can say is we're we're the, uh if we go basketball terms or like a game, we're all around. You know, everybody <laughs> wants, everybody wants this, okay? There's no, something well, about well rounded. The whatever, whatever the you know, the sexual, right? but I'm yeah. saying as for her, period, it's the, it's the way that we carry ourselves. No matter what environment you put us in, we're always going to carry ourselves like, you know what? If you're going to put me in this environment, we're the most adaptable, in my opinion. No matter where you put us, we will survive in it, make it our <laughs> own. And then people be like, oh, I want something like that. So then they try to be like that. So that's why I say we're more fantasized, but not just sexualized, but more as in people want to be like us, but they don't want to be us. Mm. And yeah. I, they would want everything, Oh, you know what? Dang. Everything that we do or say yeah. or act or whatever, they okay. want that. They just don't want the skin tone, pretty much. That's they that. want us, just don't want the skin tone. Oh, dang. So. Dang, yo. I mean, when you think of the word swag, well, who do you think of? Billy got swag. No. <laughs> no. Ew, did you just say Billy got swag? <laughs> no, they, no, they're not saying that. No. I, I didn't need a word. Now. I'm sorry. Look, okay, so it's funny, like, whenever uh, Brad asked that question, it made me think about how many people like I know or like we're friends with that was like oh my gosh I'm gonna marry a black man I want to date a black man da, 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 da. and I'm like I'd be like why <laughs> or what like you know like in my mind I'm always just like one you know as a black woman I was a little salty because I'm like uh let let me let, let us date our black man you know what I mean like that was just me in my head first of all you felt possessive but, as well. oh yes very much so oh, wow. I did but on another note it was just like it was still that level of like but why? Like you don't ever hear no girl like, oh, I, I want to date like a, a Mexican man. Like you 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 always hear when you hear it, it's always about a black man. And then does it happen at the end of the day? No, not really, because they realize that it was more of a fantasy for them than an actual like for real thing to pursue. 
Hmm. Hmm. Because, because according to statistics, black I, men look. marry black women. I, look. Well, hey, look, hey, so the, the something that you just said and, and kind of going with what Ada just said, I don't know what it is. Tell me, Jesus. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> there's sometimes, okay, so I feel like when I see um, a black woman with a white man more than once or more than twice a day, I get this weird thing in my, I don't know what it is. In your shanana? Yeah, but but like, I, I get this like this weird feeling, and it's not because I don't want to see more of that. I do want to see more of that. Like the interracial? You know, so yeah, like, I, I think that's, I mean, low. Um, but I, <laughs> but um, God, that is a whole other conversation. There's, 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 there's something <laughs> about it, no, because like, like as far as like the uh, the possessive, it kind of like territorial vibe. It's it's almost like it's like, yo, date these white men keep taking our black women. We need to step up our game. Like for some reason, I just get that weird feeling, you know. <laughs> and so I feel like, well, I guess it's, it's the same thing as well. Like, and that's anyway. So. Yeah. Well, well, okay. Because <laughs> it makes me feel like the black men have been failing in a way. I feel that. Um, okay. I mean, AJ, we appreciate your statistics. So either way, <laughs> I, I'm what what I noticed as, as far as being here um, in this city versus being from the Bay Area. Well, look, hold on, reverse back. I have family. So my brothers, I have two brothers. I have three brothers that prefer, one prefers anybody like, you know, mm -hmm. they like, uh -huh, I'm out here. And then the other two prefer to just be with other nationalities outside of black. Now, the thing for me that gets me is that because there's such a big, this is the men's side, but uh, just to park women up in here real quick, is that because women do have, black women have the stigma of being strong, we've been told that we run the men away from us, right? So it's like, yes, <laughs> definitely. It's changed, though. But like, it's. But like, but my brothers, they prefer to have interracial couples, I mean, interracial relationships. And it's crazy because now that I think about it, though, I feel like it's all about preference. But sometimes at one point I felt a little salty, too. Like, wait, hold on, sis. <laughs> like, hold on. But then it goes to, like, different cultures as well. In, in a lot of the cultures, they say stay with your same culture, right? So there's that stigma. They get mad about it. So I don't know. I well, yeah. I, the, you be like, are you for everybody or just for us? But I just feel like I feel like, and I like require like a license or something. Like, wait a minute, are you ready? Okay. Right. I, I, I like. I, 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 like I, I, I don't know. I've experienced all races, uh, not all, but <laughs> I've experienced. <laughs> wow. I'm right. I've experienced different races. Okay. I've been with white, Mexican, uh, mixed. <laughs> black but i just like black and black because that's just me black, but y'all would never know i mix with italian and native american what? like yeah my grandfather was italian and native american and my grandmother was from new orleans so she was that creole native american so anyway but my brothers prefer that and that's fine i have my nieces from it <laughs> i know like Camille, you, you was talking about the stats and like um, Apostle actually dropped a question in there and he said he's interested in hearing our thoughts about the stats and why do we think that they changed? So prior mm. to us coming on here, we all probably would have assumed that, you know, black men ain't for real taking care of their kids. Um, black men aren't dating within their race, like all these things. So like, why do we think that those, like, what, why do y'all think, I want to hear from men, why do y'all think these stats have changed? I think got freaking tired of the freaking old stats. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gosh darn it. All right, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it. 
I'll take care of the I think That's black it. men especially have just been in a fight and a struggle for their lives. There a lot of black men are also trying to change that stigma, that stereotype that no, look, we are very present. We are here. We didn't grow up with our fathers. We didn't grow up with uh this type of environment and they're trying to make it different for their kids a lot because you have to remember that we're going we have um a whole another generation we have right side thinkers so a lot of them are not um it's just not bottom line basis and a lot of them is tired of the streets and a lot of them are they don't want to be in the streets because they came from the streets like it's just so many different yeah guidelines yeah. around that so i i will say this um i don't even if y'all know this but from what I've gathered, a lot of like, okay, so when, when it comes to like a lot of uh, big uh, hip hop artists who are um, black or whatever, as they as they have gotten older, because music is a huge part in, in the way that oh yeah yeah it's it's one of the best reflections and influences to change a culture right, and so we take people like like Snoop Dogg or. Uh, like Ice Cube, whatever, or whatever, like all these, like more like these older school cats now. It's just like if you really listen to what they what they're talking about now, it's it's completely different when they were younger. Because oh, yeah. when they, when they were younger, they were in the fight, you know, like they were like trying to freaking survive, and that that's what a lot of the music was, you know, like it was just kind of trying to cope with all the the pressures of you know how it was uh, years ago, and so, but now when you see all these 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 uh, these newer younger rappers, wherever they're freaking like drug the heck out. You know, they are on everything you can think of. But when you, when you look at the contrast between the, the younger generation and the older generation of, uh, of hip hop, the older generation is like, yo, y'all need to chill, man. Like, yo, we did that jump because we felt like we freaking had to. Y'all, y'all just doing it just, just to look cool. like y'all doing it for a completely different reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all doing it because you saw us doing it, but you didn't understand why we were doing it. You know, nowadays right. it's different. I mean, it's not everything has been resolved and not everything has come to fruition as far as uh, equality and all, all that stuff but but it just like nowadays a lot of like our, our our generation a little younger they're just doing it excessively you know acting crazy and acting wild and whatever and all that kind of stuff and so I feel like um not just in music but primarily what I'm talking about right now is that like the the mindsets are shifting because it's like okay we're we're getting the right like better opportunities more and more just in business or or all, all kind of stuff more than we did back then, you know, uh, like like in today's age, a black man from for the most part nowadays doesn't know what what it feels like to not be able to vote. That's just like whatever, you know. what I'm saying like it's normal now, like you know with with that type of stuff, and so I feel like it just over time, like as we get more on our game and we have more opportunities then we start freaking away from our kids or our, our responsibilities because we're not running away from freaking bullets all the time like that you know like i don't know it, so, i just like, feel like over time it i think i also it's like levels to manhood then oh like yeah shoot absolutely i don't care what nobody says there are levels to this john <laughs> you know what i'm saying you know, because yeah go ahead it's like with with the with the, for from my opinion, from what I'm seeing, the difference is when it comes to jumping the stats because it really changed. They started changing like during our generation. It's like like a little bit right before us, but mostly our generation is what switched the whole dynamic. And from from me, uh, I'm just gonna speak from my standpoint from how I grew up. It's it's almost like. Now, for like for some reason, back in the day, it was like I I, I got kids, but I don't really care, you know. Like I'm there for what I care for, but you know, take care of them all that. I do the child, but like now, it's like no, I want to be part of my kids' life. It's like I want to be part. It's like I'm the new people who like back then people wasn't trying to have kids, but like nah, I don't want no kids. Like I know a whole bunch of people who trying to have kids early. It's like. They want to have kids because they can't mm. fix what they didn't have. So it's like, I don't want to wait. I like, I want to do it now. It's like, because they're hungry for it. It's like, for me, it's like, I want to build the next generation. I'm not even focused on my kids. I don't want to be my kids' life, but I want to, I want my kids and my kids to grow up in a generation where the statistics of dad's not being there. That's not, they're like, that was the stat. I'm like, that's all I know. It's like, 
perfect yeah. example. You can look at sports. Before then, before I would say probably like LeBron and them, when they came out, like maybe like 2010, 2008-ish, people who was coming to leave didn't have no, they were like single parent homes, the dads wasn't in their lives. But now like kids going there, all of them suburb kids, their parents was married, still together, like none of them don't know what it's like to not have their fathers in their lives. Yeah. So it's like when they talk about, um, and, it, and with me, with my understanding of it or how I see it, it's like, because now it's like our generation like, okay, we seen what it's like with the fathers not there. And this is stemming all the way back to slavery days when they take the father away from the kids. So the mother had to raise the kids, so then they are already not there. The father's not there. And this was being forced. So when the fathers finally had the option of being in their uh, lives through our generations, they're like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do it because it's already, it's almost like genetically it's put in there mindset wise but over time like self said over time it gets better but at the same time it's the the one it's, it's not letting the natural order of things happen it's like the we want it to happen sooner than wait because like i said the, this whole age group now is more i want it now instead of working to try to get it and the positive thing was on that we want that for our families instead of just in our pockets we want it, i want my family now i want my kids to know they have it now i want my kids to have it now instead of me working my butt off and they get it when they like older when they can go get it on themselves. No, I want my kids to have now. So when they get older, they already have that blueprint and say, okay, I ain't have a one for nothing. It's like seeing my mom struggling to raise me, I was like, okay, I don't want to be that. I don't want my kids' mother to struggle to raise kids that I help father. If right. I didn't want kids, I know what to do. We all know what to do if you don't want kids. You go, it's called pull out. That's it. <laughs> Wrap it up. But if you're going to make those mistakes, don't at least this around. generation now. Look, tell the tell the truth. Uh, shame the devil. Just don't look, have sex. Right. <laughs> well, okay. This generation yeah, now, they know it. It's like back then, it was like, wow, I don't want to do it. Like, no, they like, be like, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I already know what's gonna happen. It's like, I know, I'd be so happy. It's like, I never been so happy in my life. And I go through my timeline, and I see all the dudes I went to high school with, even the younger that, like, everybody is posting it because, like, to see just. Black men just like, I love my kid. Everybody posting their kids. I'm like, yo, this is like, that's the best thing. I get so excited. So I'm like, yo, it's like, I know I'm not the only one to take care of my kids. Everybody know I went to school because you you hang with around, um, we hang around other black men. And everybody like, everybody had these different scenarios. Like, I seen dudes that like super hardcore. I'm like, I don't know. I hope he don't be like a Debbie. And then we see him. That dude's like the softest person I see with his kids. Like, he just, I'm like, that's the right. stuff I want to see because. When you have kids, when you have a generation where you want to make things better, it, it's just better. It's like the generation of now black men, we want to destroy that whole stigma that they had for us. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm going to be bold. I'm going to say our generation started it because I feel like Ooh. that's what I see. Now, know. it happened before, yeah. but it was rarely. It was like you didn't, like the statistics just happened from the 90s when it got updated where the jump happened. So it was happening before. I'm not saying it never happened. There was black men taking care, but yeah. the majority when everybody came together to have the same mindset. Yeah, that happened when our generation started coming. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add so, into this real quick. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. But I got two no, more. No, go ahead. This okay. the main one. Go ahead. All right, so <laughs> two of the reasons why I think it changed, right? And I'm gonna get uh, we're gonna get back to your question in a second. But um, one, the internet also has provided a lot of opportunities that you can that you can produce yourself that i think is another big big aspect of it because you know if if i was having issues trying to get a job but like because no one was try, trying to hire me or give me a chance because i was black why do i need you anymore i can just go on the internet and make my own funds now if i can make my own funds without all the discrimination that i can i can provide for my family so now I feel more confident just as a man to, to provide without all this extra crap. I, I know that's one big thing. The other thing is this, is not just black men, but black people in general, but, but because we're on the topic, black men, we have had to uh, disregard or, or, uh, or uh, push past so many uh, identities that were forced upon us from jump that I don't think it's, it should be a surprise that that at some point throughout throughout generations that we were like, yo, I'm I'm really sick of this whole black men are just like 
out there just having sex with everybody and not caring about you know the kids that they produce or whatever like it just like we kind of just get sick of that like we kind of just like all right man that, that's enough you know, you know what i'm saying like like how can we be some of the most talented some of the most athletic some of the most creative or whatever you want to say or all kind of stuff and i can't be a good father it's like no yeah. and so i i don't i don't think it's like a for real discussion i i, I just literally think like at some point we just start kind of clicking with it and then we kind of move past it and grow past it and uh, kind of disregard that uh, stereotype. I think that's a good point, man. Cause I think, I think when you brought up that whole internet thing, I think that for at least the younger generation, like our generation and younger, we weren't able to see, or above us, they weren't able to see like black people in power, specifically like black men in power and everything like that. Now that we're seeing it on the internet and they're doing it independently, you know what I mean? To kind of like go, uh, just kind of see through the cracks and like through generations. Uh, so it's like now everybody is able, now like everybody's able to do it. You know what I mean? Like, like how you guys are right now on the Zoom call, you guys are doing what people would, that you would think you need a te- like a network to be. You know what I'm saying? So like, we need, from, we need, we needed no permission. <laughs> exactly. No permission whatsoever to do exactly okay. what you need to do and get it done. So I think that carries a lot of weight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, I think the last question was, is it levels of manhood? Absolutely. I would say this. Um, first, you got a boy. Wild, crazy. <laughs> you know what saying? Just whatever we think. And then you got a man. But then the highest level is a king. So because you can be a man, you can do all the service level stuff, you know, like get a job, provide, all kinds of stuff. And that's great. I, w- I think most people would rather a, a, a man or a male be a man than just a boy walking around in a, in a grown man's body, you know what I'm saying, acting foolish. But I'm glad you said something about being a grown boy. Okay, right. Go ahead. But, but the <laughs> difference between being a man and a king, primarily, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons, but, but I would say primarily is that a king sees the, import, the importance of a legacy. Like he passes it down to continue this whole change that we're seeing right now in black men because you can be a man and be under yourself all kind of stuff like like you're handling business but you ain't really handling the business you know like you ain't really taking care of of the other other men around you all kind of stuff but you're managing the business and not leading leading right. the business come yeah. on and so come like, through for, with the come like, on perfect, perfect example <laughs> is that martin luther king so i was a king because he, did, he, he could have had his own little personal revolution inside his own house, easily. And we would have applauded him for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because at least you weren't a boy <laughs> all your life. You know what I'm saying? But he, 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 he went further than just his own household, but looked at all the people that looked like him and uh, human beings as his household. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was in his house, you know? Yeah. And so I, I feel like that's really the difference. Um, and so are the levels? Absolutely. Like, and it's crazy because even in me being like on the level of just being a man or on, on my way to be a king, there's temptations to be the boy. You know what I'm saying? There's temptations to just freaking let it go <laughs> and, and, and not try to, to do the right thing, you know, uh, when it comes to like marriage or when it comes to my, uh, me and my son. Like there's, there's, there's moments where it's like, yo, like all those boys over there looking at the having fun, freaking older dudes than me looking like boys over there. Like, I, I wonder, you know, like if I could just kind of, you know, get a little bit of that and then come back and be a man again and all kinds of stuff. No, it don't work like that. It's a, it's a decision. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a decision to, to become a man and, and it's an even greater decision to become a king. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that- Gotta really, get off the porch. Love it to be. Look, <laughs> so with all that being said, between being raised in a, whether you were raised in a single parent or um, a dual parent, <laughs> co-parent, dual parent. Um, how do you guys feel like that may have differed your emotions and the way you carry yourself out in being a man? Just your masculinity, masculinity and emotions. Basically, how do you guys feel like being raised singly and then being raised with co-parents, like two parents in the same home? Right, so who I know Seth, Kayla, was you your both parents or a single parent? 
It's okay. complicated. No. Yeah, I was a complicated path, so complicated. I got a little bit of both. Okay. You listened to us for a while, too. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I got, I got, the, I got the, the best of both worlds from that, from that. But at the end of the day, both of my parents were always there for me, always in contact. I never had one of those relationships where it's like my dad just dipped. You know what I'm saying? It was always um, at the end of the day, if my parents they didn't have the love for each other to to continue their own relationship, they always had the love for me that I knew I had. That you know, what I mean, pushed me to the trajectory that I was in. So, um, but I will say that I spent most of the time with my mom. Like if I was there, it was with my mom and mom's house. Um, and it helped a lot. You know what I mean? Like that my mom, the, the little things, you know what I'm saying? About respecting women and different things like that, that I would have. And then my pops, my pops too, he taught me, it was just different realms. I think you need both. There's a balance between the two at the end of the day. Well, um, if I didn't have my dad there, it would have been completely different. Mm. and vice versa that's right yeah what about you aj uh definitely different i was just raised by my mom but i I don't know i I would say it was a positive thing like honestly to me not have my not have a him there whatever Uh, i'm I'm proud of you you're a new firm builder yeah i tried look I say I'm gonna be civilized. Okay, so not having him there, uh, honestly, to me, I guess it's just because I think different. It's like having my mom raise me. Is like I grew up knowing how strong a woman is and what. Uh, so basically, just like my mom raised me, where because she's like the bluntest person you ever meet. So she said, <laughs> "You ain't gonna need a woman." But for one thing, but you really don't need it for that either. I was like, okay, <laughs> was like, all right. <laughs> so she raised me to be able to do everything I can by myself. Yeah. But at the same time, she she's a, a she's like super strong, and like she really don't want to ask nobody whatever or anything unless she, so she had to. So for me, I learned like the strong will, everything about me, strong will, doing it by myself. I got from my mom, but there was things she couldn't teach me. Um, as a man, but I learned it from I learned what 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 a man should be and what he should be based on how she was. So it's like how she is towards different things, and like if I had a girlfriend or my wife, how I act a certain way. If it reflects, then I said, okay, this is something I should be doing. So everything I learned to be a man, I learned by myself or from. Examples that I've seen, like I see somebody do something, a male do something, I'm like, okay, I want to do that. I got to be like that. I got to be like that. So I had to pick my examples. Now, I, there was chances I picked wrong. I see something I'm like, I like that. I'm going to use that. And then I'm like, oh, can't use that. So <laughs> I'm going to switch to something else. But for me, I say it, it helped me. And the way it helped me out was I learned I had a better understanding of for on a women's part. So how I, I have better understanding how my wife would feel versus coming in raising on uh, having both. So then it's like my mom say something, but then if my dad would say something and they like counteract it, then I'm like, okay, so who would I go with? But just have my mom's point of view yeah. and just working through the uh, trials and trials on what a man should be or how he should act for a certain thing, it helped me out in all of So I liked it. It was, it was pretty dope. I preferred it. <laughs> um i'm gonna keep mine short i i think well there's a lot of, okay so i i was raised with both parents um and my dad is a is a is a gentle gentle beast you know what i'm saying like if you piss him off it's because you are really out of line <laughs> it's like <laughs> what could you have done to piss this really patient gentle man you know like he so I, I would say the one of the one of the biggest things that my dad taught me was presence. That a man should have a presence, and not just any presence, but he should have like, like for example, when my dad walks inside the room, you don't have to know him. Like you get a sense of calm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and man, let me tell y'all, like it's an art. Is a is a gift, you know, to have that. And so, 
I I think to myself all the time, like, okay, what, like for example, if Mishi and Manny are sitting on the couch in the living room and I walk in, you know, does it even come close to, to the way that I felt when my dad walked in to the living room, you know? And, and this, this is without saying anything. And so that's kind of what I strive for and what I hope I freaking become one day is, is to just get that presence because that presence is like, so needed i mean i there's moments in my life where i can't imagine what i would have done uh if he didn't have that presence when i was going through something you know um and so it gets me emotional when i think about that jump but i ain't getting emotional today um but um and i, I will say also one more thing is that why aren't uh, you gonna get emotional the whole question is about emotions and, and masculinity, masculinity. Like, okay well look it's enough that i told you somebody gotta cry i was about to cry okay it's enough i told you <laughs> i was gonna cry we need some um, tears on this manly talk no <laughs> <laughs> no but um Thank you, but but so I, I i would also say uh i mean was my dad perfect no but but it, he was pretty freaking close <laughs> in my opinion you know um and so I would say because of the way he, he raised me and my brothers and my sister is that he, his, uh, um, I would just say presence gave me the audacity to become a stepfather, you know, because, because like I just said, I couldn't imagine what I would have done without him. Uh, you know, when, when I started getting close to, to Mishi and Manny, like I thought to myself like all the time, I was like, man, he don't even have that. You know, like Manny doesn't have that. It's like, yo, like I, it's, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. I was like, I was like, my damn Lord, is it possible that I could become that in his life? You know, like, can I just like for real, like fit those shoes, you know? Um, and I, I almost guarantee you, I probably would not have, like I said, had the audacity or the courage <laughs> To, be, to become a stepfather um, or even a father in general uh, without that. Um, and that's just me. I mean, uh, obviously everyone's story is different, but I'm just saying like God knew that I, you know, uh, yeah, I needed that. And so, uh, whew. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's cool though. Like I'm a, I'm a prime example of, of how powerful it is uh, for a man to stick around because like I said, I probably would not have, like Manny may not have a dad right now if my dad did not stay, stay around in my life because my dad did not have his dad. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy. Like my grandfather was not in my dad's life until the very end, you know, until he died, you know? Um, and so it's crazy. Like my dad was a, he, he, he broke that chain of a of fatherlessness, you know, in our family. And so, so, yeah, now, shoot, I'm now, done. now I'm about to be like, so what about your mom? Because you talked about your mom, but you had your dad, but you had both your parents. So how did your mom, like, where did she come into play here? Yo, real quick, can I say something? Because I think that's so commendable to you, Seth, okay. just on that level. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, just, just as a man, yo, when, when you're talking to a woman who has a kid and to go ahead and take that role, when you said to fit those shoes, bro, like, sure. that, that alone... Like most dudes won't won't even look at the shoes. They'd be like, "No, nah, that that ain't my size." Right? Like, <laughs> I'm good. Is, those are the elevens, bro. I'm looking for the twelves, dog. It's like you know what I mean. You start going inside the yeah. shoes. I'm from my, then I'm from my. Those are not in my feet. Bro, right. when I tell you, dog, like that, that yeah. that's a whole different realm of like. Just I I give you props on that one, man. That's a. Because he said the audacity. The audacity. I feel yeah. like. No, no, because straight up like there was moments where i had to ask myself i'm like man who the heck do you think you are to take that you know like it wasn't even because it wasn't so much like a want or or not want it was like who do you think you are to do that you know what i'm saying because like (laughs) yeah and so i I appreciate that but yeah well (laughs) you um but yeah no obviously my my mom you know, like I'm sorry, I wanted to know. I was curious. I don't know. <laughs> I, no, so like, so my mom, uh, <laughs> so my mom and dad are, will crack you up. You feel like around them, like for a day, they would crack you up because they would have like these like little mini fights. But you know that like that's like their love language. Because my mom is is a short fire fireball Mexican. You know, like 
<laughs> so, so she'd be saying whatever was on on her mind. But like, it, it's funny because you can tell that their dynamic keeps them grounded as individuals, you know? And so it's like, my mom is, you know, uh, like I said, like, like she says everything on the song, like, <laughs> she's like, she's like whatever but my, my dad is like like i said like really calm and like calm and cool collected and so it is kind of crazy like that 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 contrast but if but it works it's been working for all these years you know what i'm saying like and so yeah like and i, I see my, my parents go through some rough times they even like did, did some did some songs about it you know where like they really had some rough patches but that that's normal for every marriage um but um i i, I would say the crazy thing like the greatest thing about them is that they wrote about their struggles in their marriage. You know what I'm saying? Where most couples don't even, can't even talk to each other about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They wrote about, they made songs. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, that's, I was, I was listening to one of their songs the other day and freaking, once again, got me emotional. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so I, I think that's what I, that was one thing I hope for in me and Misha's relationship that we can create stuff out of our, out of our hardships together and make something beautiful out of it and so yeah well yeah, it's so good to hear that you know like seeing how your parents really affected affected your life and like how you're passing that down i think that's so important like so important like parenthood is the core of it all as yeah. as you can probably see you know what i mean so like set there it sounds like your parents had a huge impact on you and, and it shows yeah. So like props to them to all our parents, you know. I mean all yeah, no, all the parents, parents. give our parents applause. No, <laughs> did their thing, they did their thing, but yeah. yeah. And and you know, it's really up to us uh to continue the positive stuff and to like I said, disregard <laughs> all yeah. the negative stuff that came that came from our parents, you know. Ooh, it's, up to, it's up to us to to keep that moving. Um as hard and as scary as it is, but yeah that's a huge part I'm glad you say that because as an adult you definitely you feel like your parents form your mind your spirit all those type of things when you're younger mm -hmm. and it's just like you get to a point in your life in a crossroad where you'd be like whoa whoa that wasn't me that was my mama and I don't like that sorry mom either way it goes not sorry but at the end of the day it's just like <laughs> you gotta learn to like get rid of those things like my dad was almost offended when I told him I was like this part of me is y'all and I don't want it well what do you mean I want it and I'd be like because I am my own person and I realized that some of the things that you taught me some of the things that like there's things that you keep, you know, when people say you have to give advice, there's things that you keep and there's things that you throw away. And the things that you throw away are the things that don't belong to you. So if you realize that um, uh, being super combative is your father, but really not you because you like, or your parents like, or um, this or that, like there's so many different levels and elements to like this missing that and becoming you and I think that a lot of men uh in this generation I feel like they dismissed that like what they seen what they went through and they are 10 toes down in a whole different way and then the OG step through and be like look here young blood you don't want to do what I did when I did it because at the end of the day this is the outcome you don't want your children growing up and hating you you don't want your children growing up and questioning themselves because of who the lack of presence the lack of understanding about what life was mm -hmm. and I think that um I was having a conversation with a young man um at w one of the people at work bring him because you know a mentorship there's a lot more mentorship happening too Mm -hmm. um in the more positive realm but you know I told him like me and him both have the same background my dad was on drugs at one point made him very much so absent in my life mm -hmm. and he's going through the same thing and I said it's important for us to reach back doesn't matter if you're a male or a female it's it's important for us to reach back and get out of the 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 mindset that that's not my child you know what I'm saying? Because it takes the whole entire village. But we went through the same experience and I had to tell him, look, you're going to grow up as a man, <laughs> as I did a, a, a young girl, resenting who your parents are because of the choices. They felt like, oh, they chose drugs over me. They chose 
that woman over me. They chose those situations and circumstances over me. And you're going to feel less loved because of it. Don't. <laughs> Let me tell you right now at 15, don't. Pray for your dad. Forgive him now because he's doing the best that he knows how to do. And when you get older, it's just like you go through your own life experiences. And I feel like there's just with men in general, those stats are changing is because the dynamics are changing in that realm is because there's more people that are um, tangible, like you said, and there's uh, media, all those type of things like that help advance the mindset of who our children are being shaped. They could see their mother on drugs, but they can also go to um, their neighbor house now and be, um, uh, what is it, accepted and um, almost adopted by them. And they grow up with those mindsets instead of what they see. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, dope. It's been real. Yes. Seems like y'all men had more words than you thought you had, which I knew you would. Boom. It's only because you did it. I'm scared now. Yeah, no. Nobody put a gun <laughs> no, in your head. It was good. It was good. Nobody put a gun in your head. It's some dang questions you had. I know. I did it on purpose. Anyway, <laughs> but check this out. Check this out. Oh, we are totally at a time but it looks like Camille has one more thing to say so can the women on this line just give a hand clap to the men that are very much so present and doing their thing I feel like this is a thing do you man. appreciate no, I know like, no this is a real hand. I'm trying not to be loud okay because you know I me I can't even hear it <laughs> can you okay there it is there it is <laughs> Into my earpiece. No, but real talk, the men on this line, you can see, but the men on this line, children or no children, uh, they are all, they are all walking in them, they, they are walking in themselves. They're walking in who uh, God intended them to be. As fathers, that's the gift. As maybe I'm look, I'm open to being aunties, godmoms, and all that kind of stuff because she does not want children like that but um but god has given all of us gifts to be able to walk that out and so i literally am maternal because caleb does not have kids does not make him paternal right it makes us more of a village than anything so i really commend all of you guys for being great men and that they're still present and they're still out there thank you very much so <laughs> <laughs> thank you that being said, she kind of like threw off my like little zoom bell. Sorry, but I had to. How could we not just appreciate oh, the? It was, it, was it was coming. It was coming. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, like, Wait. Just, just, but I love you. Just but, but hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Oh. Anyway, so with that being said, thank you for Mill Camille for giving for giving these men on the line this awesome a shout out because one, uh, thank you Caleb for even coming on with us. As, as we all hey. know, I don't know if y'all know this, but this is his first, like, live ever. Yay. So, um, this is, that's a pretty big deal. Like, that's he's my a, fam. He's so, a, he's a what? <laughs> I'm pretty proud of him. And um, yeah. AJ and Seth, y'all out here doing your thing continuously on here with us every other week. Maybe we'll get Caleb to keep coming on here <laughs> with us all the time now, <clears throat> probably. Um, so... <laughs> 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 If y'all don't know, which y'all should know by now, there is this button that should be popping up on your live if you're watching with us live that says get notified whenever the creatives go live next. You should turn it on. So then that way, next time we go live, we go live you can be notified and hop on with us. Again, we enjoy what we do. We love what we do. These conversations are, they're great conversations. They're thought-provoking conversations. And it's more or less not just for us to be able just to talk to you, but for us to be able to show you that young adults, we're more than what y'all think you are, that what we are thought to be millennials. We are more than what people think we are. We have a lot to say and we want to use our voices in a positive way to help affect, you know, the next community coming up. Hence why we have this conversation about black men. So then that way, the people who listen to this later on that are younger than us can be like, yo, I can do different, I can do better. The people who are the same age as us can see that I can do better and I can do it. So again, follow us on Facebook. We got Instagram, we're on TikTok. We TikToking. 
Oh, we finally gonna have a real TikToks tomorrow. So right, prepare. right. We go, we go have real TikToks tomorrow. So um, <laughs> catch us on TikTok. <laughs> we're on YouTube and again. Like if you didn't catch us today, we're on Spotify. You can always listen to us later on your way to work. So then that way you can like get jiggy with it. Um, Man, this is comments, <laughs> topics. Right, get jiggy with. I'm always feeling good. Anyway. <laughs> Comment any topics that you want to hear us talk about. Um, I have a feeling that uh, our next topic is going to be like for real, for real spicy. And I'm talking spicy, spicy. Like you don't want to miss spicy because we getting down and dirty. We about to keep it real. Dirty. So, like, I got a bad stomach, so I can't do that spicy. You, you might have to make that next one an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah, that would that one might have to be. Able, should should I tell them what it is? It's only because we all think about it all. The should I tell them what it is? Tell them what nah. it is, girl. Because we not. Because we talking about ooh. Because we talking about sex, baby. Say what? We talking about talking about you and me. <laughs> hey, we talking about all the good things We're and talking, the bad things oh, that oh, we oh, see. <laughs> oh, so, I definitely thought y'all singing another song. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> on oh. that note, bye. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Tune in with the squad. Uh, what mm. is it? March. Happy Black History Month. Hold on. Yes. March. March twelfth. And yeah, mm. Happy Black History Month. Because yes. this is there's two days left, so make sure you go out with a bang. Like I listened to our last podcast because it was Black, black women, women mm. and Black men. Yeah. Come on now. Of course, we had to do it. No, the best thing going. <laughs> Look. All right, AJ, you got us. Yeah, I got us. Cool. Here we go. <gasps> what? 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 Did you? What? Did it break? It broke. I think it broke. Well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to get us. <laughs> Ella, don't worry about it. Look, Look, we haven't had a bad outro in a long time. Right. Like, okay. Look, it's okay. I got I got I got us. Cause guess what? I got I got it. <laughs> it broke it. You be prepared and you stay prepared. You're always prepared for everything. Yes. Here we go. Right, let's see. Too cold. Yep. Jesus hit him with their stunner like he's stone cold. Then I raised from the tomb into some royalty that's rose gold. Ha! We gotta have your foot on the accelerator. Going up. We gotta have your foot on the accelerator. Going up. We came in with no reservation. Came in with no hesitation. Uh, came in with no medication. But we left with all the validation in the room, 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 room. Once I was done, we dropped the mic, then we dip like room, 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 room. Good night, y'all. Peace. We out. All right, don't go, don't, don't go nowhere, Kayla.